Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. We have awesome news again from Ukrainian side because we continue our counter-offensive operation here near to Liman. We actually took that city recently, but I'll show you the new direction of Ukrainian counter-attack in this video. But first of all, let's zoom to Liman and I wouldn't say that that operation from Ukrainian side was 100% successful. Yeah, first of all, I'm going to show you the timeline, how the front line changed uh, recently. So it was uh, yesterday we took uh, Liman and now we're re we reached Zorichne and Torske villages. Unfortunately, majority of the Russian forces were able to withdraw from this area. So mainly Ukrainian army wasn't able to encircle like thousands and thousands of Russian soldiers. Mainly, we attack from two of the directions, from this northwest side and also southeast side. From the north side, the offensive action was much more faster because we were able to overtake Russian defense lines. And basically, if we cross this river over here, there's just open road to take Liman and Zarichne over here. From Yampil, so this is the Yampil uh, village over here, you may call it town. Uh, it's more complicated because there are more rivers, more small lakes, and here we have the forest. So it was not very convenient for our forces to attack from this part. Also, it's the town itself which may be used as a defense line and also Russia built defense line over here. So it wasn't possible to attack from Radio Gorodok. Well, actually it was possible, but in that case we would have lost lots of our forces. And also we had to cross the Siversky Donets River over here, which is much harder to cross compared to this river over here. So attacking the north was much more faster compared to the south because of the reasons I told you. That is why why we took Zarichne from the north. I think a circumvent would have been successful if we would just reach those lakes and from the south part we would cut Russians uh, from this part, from their supplies. And now what we see that we freed this city and mainly Russians just left this part. Again, they left most of their armored vehicles and tanks and took light vehicles to get away very fast. And firstly, 20s Russian army left this place and mainly regiments from the self-proclaimed Republic stayed there to fight against the Ukrainian army and they were demolished and circled. Still, it is a success of Ukraine counter-attack here we took our ground but the main thing for our army is not just to take ground but to cause losses for Russian army and that goal was not fully achieved during this operation however I was almost sure that we encircled Russians because we got the information from other resources that we encircled all of this group there could be around 5,000 soldiers and I didn't see the videos showing the endless Russian columns of the soldiers who were imprisoned in that case so they were able mainly to run away it's not a good sign but still as you can see we took the four post on the front line and now there is the big gap in the russian defense lines and we're gonna go to kremina over here kremina is very important city my friends because here we have the road that connects uh, the supply lines from Svatove to Serodonetsk, Rubizhne and Lysychansk. If you take Kremina, you cut supplies for Russian army in that region as well. Mainly, they will have supplies just from this part. Which would be not enough because uh, those are the secondary roads that could be easily damaged or demolished. So the main road is over here. And I think we are not far away from Kremina. I would say 5.5 kilometers. We already can target that area and area of the Lysychansk and Severodonetsk, obviously. Also, one more gain that we took. Yampel, Liman and all of these territories over here, uh, they are on a high ground. So you may target Lysychansk and Severodonetsk from those positions. 37 kilometers. I think we may use Caesar artillery systems, Panzer Haubitze or M777s to target those areas. Here I do expect that we'll see three of the main vectors of Ukrainian attack. First to Svatova over here, next to Kremina, which is already ongoing. And the third one here just straight away to Lysychansk and Syrodonetsk. Here we may encircle them from this side. 
I expect that in that case we're gonna encircle the Russian army finally. Let's go to the north here because near to the Kupensk we also have some sort of advantage. So let's go to yesterday, it was yesterday evening I think. And we took this ground near to Kupensk. By the way Russia tried to counterattack Kupensk again. They also shelled the city itself with their artillery. So for us it's main thing to continue our counterattack, taking ground uh, back to Ukraine. And here I see that we may go to Torske over here and also we may go to Svatove. So Svatove also could be like in circle probably if we go in two directions. Torske, I don't think so. The main thing for Ukrainian army that we were able to cross this river over here and push the Russian forces more to the east and it's just a matter of time then we'll take Svatove and next gonna be Starobilsk and all of the Russian group will leave, perform the good will gesture from this side. I promise you to speak about one more counter-attack. Well, here we go. It's on the south. Recently, today, we got awesome news from this part. As you can see, let's go on a timeline. So it was yesterday and little by little we are taking, I would say not little by little, but very significant achievements for Ukrainian army. So this morning we took Zolota Balka and it's been reported that our army already reached Duchani. It's been reported by the Russian side so far. They are panicking, they are running away as usual. Great achievement for Ukrainian army. If we take the channel, we may continue to proceed all across this road to reach Novaka Hovka. That is still under control by Russian forces. However, we targeted that bridge and Russians cannot uh, throw their uh, backups to the Russian group that consists of 25,000 soldiers here in this region. But we push them very hard. Those are just fields here, my friends. They don't have any places to hide. It's very hard to build some sort of defense lines and it's getting cold. The main thing that it's getting cold. I was driving my car today and I saw like six degrees on a thermometer and Russians, they simply don't have the winter equipment. Uh, they are in lack of food, basic supplies, basic needs. That is why their morale and motivation is very low. So as usual we use the proper time for our counterattack and I do expect that this situation will change for tomorrow and we'll see more gray areas and obviously blue. And now let's go to some of the news and events. By the way my friends this is my telegram channel. I highly recommend you to subscribe to it because there I regularly upload the current information that I may not sometimes upload on my main YouTube channel channel so keep updated and subscribe for me there because you may have some of the unique content right about the recent advancement in Kherson area on the south this is Hrishinivka village Hrishinivka is over here it's been confirmed that we took it that is why you can see the blue color right we have more trophied vehicles most of them are BMPs and BTRs so Russians just left them and took light uh, fast vehicles to run away. Uh, we have those white crosses just to understand whether it's enemy vehicle or your friendly one and we paint over the Z signs. Greetings to Australia. Here you can see the Bushmaster that was delivered to Ukrainian army is towing the trophied Russian BTR. Obviously it's Russian because you can see those Zs here. And this is Suhoi Su-34 that was shot down by Ukrainian army it has the stars here i wish i would have access to that wreckage i would take that star part of this airplane awesome or with this registration number it's interesting to see that the wreckage parts are quite big so uh, i think it was impact or something if you look at those engines but mainly airplane was not destroyed into the small pieces as i saw myself in buzova village near to the cave where the parts were so tiny here you can see uh, everything and still it was the fire i think those uh, holes are the shrapnel from the impact of the stinger or different missile sometimes you see russian soldiers in very bad uniform 
Well, they tried to research that question in Russia and they found out that 1.5 million uniforms of uh, Russian soldiers somehow disappeared from the storages. So Russian army got that uniform on the paper, but actually there is nothing. Russian corruption works for Ukraine right now. Imagine how much money they spent for that uniform that never was even produced. Some of the footages uh, from Liman and nearby, oh, those are the Pantheon, the part of the Pantheon Bridge. I think it is, uh, it can be used again. Kamas obviously destroyed. I monitored the Russian publics as well and they have panic. Uh, now we have counterattack in Kherson and they're saying that um, they've been betrayed, that everything is bad in Russia, someone needs to be punished and we like that stuff. Also news from Turkey, the military ship that they were building was put on the water. It is still in a process because we need equipment to be put there and that may take uh, around two years. But still it's a good sign that that ship is already on the water and here we have the first lady of Ukraine. Yeah, Russian military influences uh, start to say that we took the Dachny village which is far away from the previous front lines and it's great my friends that they are panicking and probably gonna run from this part as well those are the shots from the russian propaganda movie that they are filming on occupied territories so <laughs> it's very funny and this is the laboratory russian propaganda says that america built the secret laboratories here in Ukraine. Those laboratories were used to modify some kind of virus that may attack only Russians. And that was the main goal of Ukraine and America. Now Russians took the eastern side of Ukraine where all of those laboratories were located. But here you can see it's just, uh, we call it butaphoric, uh, so not real fake laboratory uh, that was built around a simple room and it's just funny so this guy is american obviously so you have american flag you have ukrainian flag obviously something is wrong here kadyrov is sending his people to fight in ukraine again those soldiers are not as experienced as we were able to demolish here before and we have just a few of the tracks they start to film the column but actually we have even the Porsche Cayenne there and some of the tracks obviously not a lot of people in that column for sure they may do something here in Ukraine it's not good that we have more meat coming uh, to fight for Russia but still in general they are not changing the system of Russia logistics uh, command control and communication so if they are in lack of those components in their army no matter how many people they would send here they will not win this war so together with that porsche cayenne we have uh, not more than 200 soldiers in those tracks and vehicles and by the way uas uh, the cars they use it's not a reliable car compared to the cars we have yes mostly we have used pickups coming to ukraine from united states from european countries but those are japanese made or european made uh, or american made cars that are much more reliable compared to russian cars also it was a very interesting post today from Kandu himself he was blaming russian army he was blaming russian generals for the loss of liman he said they should take kalashnikovs and go to the front lines themselves but those generals were put into position by putin also the particular general that kadyrov was blaming in his post recently got the reward of hero of russia from vladimir putin i see a big crack here in russian political and military management and if ukrainian army continue to take more ground we're gonna see more kind of those conflicts appear in russia finally it may destabilize the russian regime itself all right guys i'm gonna keep you updated on situation here here in ukraine don't forget to check out my telegram channel it is in a video description now press the like because it helps me a lot to propel my videos around youtube and if you want to support me financially there are some of the links in the video description below you may support me on patreon paypal or donatella whichever you like my friends i wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are have a great time